All right, good morning. It's Friday, right? So those of you who work in uh, five days a week and all of that, uh, you know, grind or whatever, you made it. So it's going to be a good day. Put those favorite clothes on, <clears throat> get to work, enjoy the day, and rock the weekend. So uh, that's what we're doing. Hey, we're, we've got kind of a free weekend this weekend. That's always fun when there's like not a lot of activity going on. So uh, I'm going to enjoy that and play some golf with my baby son today and I'm uh, going to enjoy that time and then going to go to dinner with my wife and then who knows what Saturday's going to do. I got a lot of stuff to do. We're always working on something, but uh, we're going to be just enjoying life and I hope you do too. Uh, listen, we've went through some heavy topics uh, this week on divorce and remarriage and, and all of that through Mark. Uh, and so uh, today we launch into another subject, still just as heavy, uh, but a great subject nonetheless. And so uh, let's just jump into it. I'm going to read it to you. We're in Mark chapter 10 this morning. Uh, and we are just working our way through the, the book of Mark. Um, I've got these little, I, I'm old school, man. I write my sermon notes and messages out. Uh, this is my brand new one. It's my seventh one. So I filled up six of these uh, teaching over the past year uh, in in the COVID season. Uh, in this daily dose, and so uh, man, it's been rich. And so I've learned a, I've learned a bunch as we just walk through books of the Bible. And so uh, I appreciate those of you who join in here with us. And I hope the Lord blesses you in, in these endeavors. Uh, we attempt very hard to uh, preach nothing but what he says in the text. And so that's where we are today. Let me read it to you. Now, so Jesus has just finished talking about divorce uh, and, and, and having a confrontation really with the Pharisees. And then as he, as he turns, uh, the parents are bringing children to him, right? So they're just kind of shoving their, their children up to him. They, and they're wanting him to bless them and, and those kind of things. And so this is what goes on. It says, and they were bringing children to him so that he could touch them. Uh, but the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, allow the children to come to me. Do not forbid them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it at all. And he took them by his arms and enfolded them in his lap and began blessing them and laying his hands on them. So those are the uh, three verses uh, are, that we're looking at today. And um, let's just kind of see this unfold because it says a lot uh about our day and age and everything else. And so let's just see what it, what's going on. So they're bringing children to him, right? This is what the text says. They're, now, uh, Mark uses the word padia, which means children. Matthew uses the word brephos, which means uh, suckling. So we have to assume that while they are children, these are tiny children. Now, I don't mean the kind that can't walk. I mean the kind that are still breastfeeding. That's that's the context of where we are. So we get the picture of, of what's going on. They're, they're bringing their children to them, you know, little two and three year olds. Maybe. I don't know how in those cultures, they could breastfeed a little long, or they did a little longer than we do. So it literally could have been up to a six or seven year old. But we're going to assume, for our sake, somewhere in that in that range, under under five or six. Now, um, it says they did that so that he would touch them. All right. Now that's uh, Matthew says that they he would lay hands on them and pray. So what we what we understand clearly is that they were bringing their children to Jesus. They just wanted him to bless their children. This is this is what's going on. Like, hey, bless bless my children. Now, the history of of uh, of Israel was that they would bless their children, and we know that. I mean, they would bless even children when they were older. Remember, uh, as uh, uh, Jacob and blessing his kids and. Um, all, all of that that happened throughout the scriptures, uh, they would pray for God's favor. Uh, they would pray uh, that uh, God would would redeem them. Uh, these were all things they would do a celebration at the before the Day of Atonement, where they would bring the kids and the the priests and the uh, parents and so forth would would uh, pray over them this blessing that God would show them favor on the Day of Atonement. Uh, and so it 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 means that they're they're praying that God would save them, He would bless them, He would give them eternal life. This is what we would understand, or they would understand that they were doing. That want God to to bless their child, to save them, to bless them, to to give them eternal life, to actually let them be a part of the kingdom of God. Now it says that the disciples rebuked them for that. 
Now, that's a pretty strong word. Hey, hey, you know, uh, get, get those kids out of here. That was That's kind of the flavor. That word rebuke means it. So the disciples see what's going on. Now, Jesus isn't looking at this yet. His attention isn't on that. Not that he's not attentive to everything, but his attention isn't on that yet. Uh, so, you know, the disciples kind of acting like his bodyguard, his secret service, I guess, sees kids coming up. And they're, hey, no, 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 get out of here. Go, no, go. Hey, get take those kids out, right? I mean, that's that's the concept of what's going. And so they they were rebuking the crowd. Well, why would they be doing that? Obviously, they're still ignorant of the grace of God in some sense in their own life. They're still thinking that, uh, you know, the kingdom is about adults and, and bravado and, and all of those things. And, and even as they're gathering some understanding of it, apparently they still think salvation is something that you, you have to kind of earn, right? Um, and so this is, this is that context. Now, it says this, but when Jesus saw this, he became indignant. Now, that's a strong, I mean, we, we talk about strength to strength. They were rebuking them. Jesus sees it. He becomes indignant. That is, there's no way around this except to understand that Jesus got really angry with his disciples at this point. This isn't like, hey, come on, guys. Can you, hey, hey, come here. Let me, let me explain something. No, no, no. This is, this is almost like a slap, not really a slap upside the head, but you know what I'm saying? He's like, hey, hey, stop it. So there is this strong force that the scriptures are saying. Uh, so, so Jesus is angered by the disciples and he slams them. That, that's a strange thing. So there, there's something serious about what they were doing that brought out an anger, uh, in our Lord. And so I just think it's important that we understand that it says, but when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them and, 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 and saying and saying to them, um, whether he's talking to the disciples, the parents, or the or the babies themselves, he said, "Allow the children to come to me." It's almost like he's looking at the parents. Hey, no, no, hey, no, come, no, come on, they don't worry about them. Come on, uh, bring bring those kids to me. This is what's going on. Jesus calls them back and says, "Bring the children to me." Um, now, this this age child, they've got no saving faith, right? I mean, there's there's nothing in them that that they can choose Christ. I mean, they, they don't know enough. They're, they're three and four year old. Now you're going to argue that my kid loves Jesus, sings Jesus, loves me. And, and I don't doubt that. I, I don't doubt that for a minute. I'm not saying that. I'm simply saying the comprehension of repentance and all of the things that we know are necessary to believe in, in who Christ was that he died on the cross, that they don't have the knowledge of that yet. I just want that clear and understood. They've not rejected, nor have they affirmed the Messiah. They're, they're, neutral in that sense. And I don't mean from a heart perspective. I just mean, I mean, I, I mean, I don't mean from a spiritual perspective in that sense. I mean, from a heart perspective, they've not, they've not affirmed those things. And he says this, the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. They belong to me. He said, the kingdom of God, it's for them. It belongs to them. Not, not simply children of believers, right? He's not saying now the kids who the kids who of believers they belong to me. Not well, those who've been circumcised belong to me. Not those who've been baptized belong to me. Not those who've been dedicated belong to me. He doesn't he doesn't discriminate. These are infant children, and he says these babies belong to me. Now, let's understand a few things, lest we get messed up. Every, all, every one of us, every baby that was brought to him was a dirty, rotten, stinking little sinner, right? I mean, I know we don't like to see them that way, but that's what they are. Dirty, rotten, stinking little sinners. Every one of us, right? We know that. Psalm 51, uh, 5 says that David says, in sin, my mother conceived me. That doesn't mean that the sexual act was sinful. He's saying that I was conceived embodied in, in sin, born with this sin nature, right? That's what we got from Adam and Eve. We inherited it by one man, all died, right? And so by Christ, all shall live. That all died means that every one of us is born in sin. We have a sin nature. We're not inherently good and then choose to fall into sin. The fall created that problem for us. Um, so, so uh, I mean, the, they're none righteous. No, not one, right? That's what that's what Paul told the Roman church. Uh, John, uh, Jesus told Nicodemus, those who are born of flesh is flesh. Those who are born of spirit is spirit, right? And if you want to be born again, that's the only way to get into the eternal kingdom. But these babies haven't, haven't had that yet. So this isn't about them being you know, somehow uh, sinless and, and pure. 
Proverbs 22, 15 says uh, that foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, right? So, so we understand this, this, is, this is not, well, they're, they're, they're perfect or whatever. This is simply uh, that, that these kids are coming into the kingdom of God and belong to it for what reason? The grace of God. That's it. Just the sheer grace of God. Uh, Deuteronomy 139, Moses is beginning to uh, explain to them what's going on as they enter the kingdom and, and the promised land and why some aren't going to go and aren't going to make it. He says, children heading into the promised land who have no knowledge of good or evil. He said, he said they're going to go in. Th those, those who have no knowledge of good or evil, they're not, you know, they're just neutral. They're, they're coming in. Um, Jeremiah 19.4 <clears throat> about the infants that were being offered to Molech. So there was a God in those days. No God. There, it was, you know, because there is only one God. But the God of Molech, they had gotten to where they were throwing their infants into the fire to be blessed by Molech. And, um, and he, uh, Jeremiah, refers to them as my innocent ones. These are my innocent ones, he says. Ezekiel 16, um, about Molech, you are slaughtering my children. And then 2 Samuel 12, uh, David, when he, when, after he sinned with Bathsheba and they were pregnant, and, um, and, he, and God said, I'm going to let this sin that you did calls for death. I'm going to let you live, but your baby's going to die in your place. So David begins to fast, and he begins to cry out to the Lord that who knows but that God might save his child. So when the baby dies, everyone's afraid to come to David because he's in this great time of mourning and can be, can't be consoled, they thought. But when the baby died, he gets up, washes his face, and goes on about life. And they're going, why, why are you not mourning now? You're mourning there. Now you're not mourning here. He says, well, because of this, he said, I, I can't go. He can't come to me, but one day I, I'm, gonna, I'm going where he is. Now, it's easy to think, well, he only means the grave there. And I have thought that from time to time, that maybe that's all he's talking about there. But then you look at one of his other children, Absalom, who uh, was evil and despicable, slept with all of David's um, uh, wives in, in open uh, under a tent so people could see, um, and then tried to kill David when Absalom died. Uh, that's when he was unconsoled. Second Samuel 18 says that, I mean, he was just unconsoled. Well, what's the difference? Why, why that one? Because he knows that one he won't see again. That, that's the issue. Um, let me read to you first Kings and I want to have some kind of conversation with you about some other issues and then we'll, we'll finish this thing up. So again, we're in, uh, first Kings and they are being blasted for their delivering of the babies to Moloch. And uh, this is what God says. Therefore, behold, I am bringing disaster on the house of Jeroboam. And I will eliminate from Jeroboam every male person, both bond and free in Israel. And I will make a clean sweep of the house of Jeroboam, just as one sweeps away dung until it's gone. Anyone belonging to Jeroboam who dies in the city, the dogs will eat. And anyone who dies in the field, the birds of the sky will eat. For the Lord has spoken it. Now you arise, uh, go to your house. When your feet enter the city, the child will die. Then all Israel will mourn for him and bury him. For he alone of Jeroboam's family will come to the grave. And you think, wow. So this is what God thinks of that. Hey, the only ones that, that, that are going to have some dignified aspect of life is that one baby. Uh, that, that because Jesus says, those are, are mine, they belong to me. Now, I say all of that, and you can't help, and, and, and this is not a political statement, it's just a statement. Um, you can't help but see that what we're doing in our world when it comes to abortion is extremely evil and despicable in the eyes of God. Just understand that. There's no innocent party in this. In your core, you know that the taking of a life of a child, you can call it a tissue, you can call it whatever, you know that's not true. You, you can be lied to, you can have politicians lie to you, any, anybody else lie to you. You and me, common sense says that that is a child and we know it to be so. 
We don't call it, oh, I'm having a fetus. We call it, I'm having a baby, right? Now, you can have those who do say that because they want to pacify their own conscience that's been seared by sin. But this abortion thing is wrong and it's evil and it is a blight on our country. And, and I know you're going to say, man, what, where did this guy come from? I, I'm just telling you, when we come to the text and the text says what the text says, we should take note of that. And so, so all those, you don't think the blood of the innocent are going to be in the hands of every one of our politicians who have agreed and voted for continuing uh, abortion. You don't think it's going to be on the hands of those in the Supreme Court? We're, you're grossly mistaken. Blood is on those hands of those in the Supreme Court and in Congress. And those of you who protest and vote and push those people into office, you're as guilty as well. And we need to repent of those things. I, I'm, I repent as a man who has never been for that. I repent for our nation just like Jeremiah does. And you would do well to do the same. Uh, it's a blight. It's, it, it, listen, Jesus got indignant at the disciples simply because they wouldn't let the children come to him. You don't think he's equally indignant that we're killing our children? It's just I'm, 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 I'm just want to say that. Leave it there for you, and you do with that what you want to do. And then we're going to finish this up because he says this. He says, uh, truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child, will not enter it at all. Now, he's already had that conversation a chapter ago. He's having it again because he has children there because he's driving home a point. What is it about children? Well, they're open, they're trusting, they're dependent, they're uh, weak, and they're humble. The proud never inherit the kingdom of God. It is only those of us who know that we and of our own strength cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And and so this is this is where that is. And so you and me, if we want to come to faith, have to understand that those children who inherit the kingdom in order to get there, we have to have that same mindset, right? We have to have that innocence, which we only get by the blood of Christ. There will come a time when these children uh, will choose to do evil. At that point, they will fall out from underneath that gracious care of God into the same gracious care of God, different category. They need to repent of their sins, fall on their face, and believe that he is the Son of God. So this is, this is the text before us today. And so what, 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 what's, the, what's the point of this for us? Well, we ought, to, we ought to live like children, right? We ought to be aware that we're saved by grace, and then we ought to give grace. And we ought to protect our children, and we ought to be gracious toward them because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And so in our parenting, it doesn't mean that we should do so in an angry fashion. It doesn't mean that we, that we have the opportunity to just get ugly with those. It is patience just like Jesus did because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. As we discipline our children, we do so in the spirit and discipline of the Lord. This is the context of this passage today. Man, how sobering is that for us? Lord bless you guys. Have a great weekend. And I uh, can't wait to see you Monday, Lord willing, as we just continue rocking through the book of Mark. Love you guys.